everyone, it's Alyssa and welcome to You Can Learn Math. So today we're going to talk about central and inscribed angles in circles. Now these, as a concept, central and ins inscribed angles, pretty straightforward, pretty simple, but hey, you should know by now in your math class, it's not going to be that easy. They're going to throw some wrinkles in there to make you work for it. So let's start with what a central or inscribed angle is. If I have a circle and I have my, my centers right about there and I were to draw an angle like this, it's an angle where both corners, or both end points of this angle are touching the edge, the circumference of the circle and the vertex of the angle is at the center. Center, central. This is a central angle. If I were to draw an angle where, and it doesn't matter where this is, this could be, here's an example, make a more narrow one. Again, both of the end points are on the edge, the circumference of the circle, but this time the vertex is also on the circumference on the edge of the circle. This is an inscribed angle. So those are our terms, central, the vertex is at the center, inscribed, the vertex is on the edge. Now these angles can be as wide or as narrow. I could have a central angle that's very wide like this. I could have an inscribed angle that's very wide like that. Again, the only uh, caveats, the only requirements for this would be to have both endpoints on the circumference, the edge of the circle, and if it's central, the vertex is at the center, inscribed, the vertex is on the circumference or the edge as well. Right, so what are we going to do with these mathematically? Well, here is, here's the rule. I say this angle I'm going to try to make this as close to, there we go. As you can tell, I have drawn here a 90 degree angle, right? 90 degrees. What if I were to do this a couple more times? If I were to make a couple more 90 degree angles. So I have four 90 degree angles and they're all at the center and they are intercepting the circumference. So it's divided it into four equal parts. Now each of these parts, this would be one fourth of the circumference. This bit would be one fourth of the circumference. This would be one fourth of the circumference. And this would be one fourth of the circumference. Now we can represent this as either a actual, an actual di distance, like if I knew that this entire circle all the way around was 20 inches, then I would say, okay, this arc is five inches long, this arc is five inches long, this is five inches long, and this is five inches long. Or I could make a more general statement, like if I didn't know the exact inches around, I could say, well, a circle, if I start and then go all the way around, I've gone 360 degrees, just like with an angle. So how much of the circle have I gone here? I've gone 90 of that 360. There's another 90, another 90, another 90. So arcs can be measured as degrees, just like angles, because it's what portion of this 360 degree circle are we talking about? So if you have a central angle, and then here you see this is 90 degrees, and this arc up here is 90 degrees because it's one fourth of the way around this 360 degree circle. So what can we assume from that? We have our central angle is, is 90 degrees and our arc is 90 degrees. Well, it's not too much of a leap to say that the central angle and the arc will be the same. They will have the same degree measurement. And that's always true. 
central angle and arc, same degree measurement. Now, this one, this next one is a little harder to illustrate, and in fact, it may seem a little impossible to believe, but for inscribed angles, oh, I'm trying to draw a straight line here. There we go. An inscribed angle, and I tried to get this so that this was the quarter point, so that this arc was 90 degrees. Should be pretty close to 90 degrees. The inscribed angle is half of the intercepted arc. That's the terminology you're going to hear a lot. The intercepted arc. The arc it is crossing or intercepting. It is half of that. So if this arc is 90, this angle is 45 degrees. Always. And I know this is going to seem a little hard to believe, but it is true if this angle is over here. It's true if this angle is all the way over there. <laughs> it's true if this angle is straight back. No matter where this angle is, as long as it is intercepting that same arc, it will have the same degree measure. And you can see that. See here, all these are, you know, if you draw them more precisely, they will be all precisely half of 90, in this case, 45 degrees. So that's not super hard to have as a concept to memorize. Okay, if it's in the center, it's the same. If the vertex is on the edge itself, then it's half of the intercepted arc. Well, you know they're not going to leave it that simple for long, right? Right. You know this by now. So they're going to start throwing different problems at you. They're going to use combinations of these different concepts. So, and they're going to throw X's in. <laughs> X's. They come back from algebra. They come back to haunt you. So here's an example. Let's say, no, let me make this a straight line. Okay, there we go. They love things like this. And if you're a sci-fi fan, you're like, hey, it looks like the Star Trek symbol. But it's not. It's a math problem. So let's say they tell you that this angle is 110 degrees. And they ask, what is this angle? What is X? You can't look at this as a odd, funky looking quadrilateral. You have to look at it as two separate angles. This angle, which is an inscribed angle, and this is its intercepted arc. And then separately, this central angle and this same arc is its intercepted arc. So the way you would solve for X is you would use the knowledge that you have that one, a central angle and its intercepted arc have the same degree. So that means this arc is 110 degrees. Now we have to kind of push that angle here. We have to kind of mentally erase it. Can't really do that on your paper, I know, but I'm trying to help here. So you have to kind of mentally erase it. So all you're looking at is this now, this inscribed angle. And what's the rule for the inscribed angle? It is half of its intercepted arc. So half of 110 is 55 degrees. So X is equal to 55 degrees. They love these sort of overlapping angles. Uh, they just, they, they really do. They really love these. Here's another example of one. And this came from a, a student I was tutoring. Let's make those lines a little straighter, shall we? Okay, and they very much specify that this is the center and they do not these lines are not going through the center. Okay, so we're calling this A, B, C, and D. And they say, okay, 
A, C, this little symbol here means the arc. A, C is congruent to the arc B, D. And the ratio of C, D to B, D is 2 to 1. If the measure, that's what this little m means, the measure of arc AB equals 80, then they wanted us to find the measure of CD, the measure of BD, the measure of the angle BCD, the measure of AC, the measure of the angle ABC, and the measure of the very large arc ABD. You go, oh my goodness. Well, we're going to use all of these central and inscribed angles and our knowledge about them to figure this out. So first, we are told that the arc AC is congruent to the arc BD. So this right here is congruent to this. All right, so these uh, arcs are the same. The ratio of CD to BD is two to one. I can't really mark that on my drawing right now, but I'm gonna keep that in mind for the future. So I'm gonna say this is two times, let's make a little note to myself, BD, because this is two to one. So CD is twice as big as BD. So that's just a note to myself. All right, now measure of arc AB is 80 degrees. All right, this, okay, arc AB up here. I'm actually gonna highlight it, there we go. Mark AB is 80 degrees. Now from this piece of information, they love throwing algebra in, they really do. Because you think it's gonna be just, oh, if the central angle's 90, it's 90, ta-da, I'm done with my homework. But they love throwing this stuff in and making it a puzzle. So this one was a good example of using some algebra. What if I called this X? The arc AC is X. Well then BD is the same, it is also X. And then we know that CD, this arc down here, is two times BD, the ratio is two to one. So this would be two X. Well, how do I solve for X? Well, the whole circle is 360 degrees. So if I add all these pieces together, I can figure it out. I have my arc here up top, mark arc AB is 80. Then I have arc BD is X, arc CD is 2X, and arc AC or CA is also X. And all together, those equal 360. I combine my X's to be 4X, then I'm going to subtract 80 from both sides, and I get 4x equals 280. Then I divide both sides by four, and I get x equals 70. This is very valuable. Now I know I can fill all these in. I know this is 70, this is 70, and this is 140. Okay. So, the first one here, what is the measure of arc CD? We've solved, it's 140. Next one, what is the measure of arc BD? We've solved, that's 70. Now they want to know the measure of the angle BCD, this angle. Well, now we can use our inscribed angle information that we know that, see this angle is intercepting this arc. That arc is 70. Inscribed angles are half of their intercepted arc. So half of 70 is 35 degrees. So there's our next one. The measure of angle BCD is 35 degrees. Measure of arc AC, we know that one too. That's also 70 degrees. Measure of angle ABC, that one, same thing. This is an inscribed angle and its intercepted arc is 70. Inscribed angles are half of their intercepted arcs. Half of 70 is 35. So now I know measure of angle ABC is 35. 
And finally, they wanted to know the measure of arc ABD from A to B to D. And that is 150, 80 plus 70. So again, they love these kind of problems. You're going to see a lot of them where they have overlapping angles and things that look like triangles and quadrilaterals and stuff inside angles, but they really are just multiple angles, central and intercepted, stacked up each other, and you kind of have to be a problem-solving detective to solve them. I'm going to have videos up shortly that are going to be about other types of interior and exterior angles, so look out for those. Once I post those, I will put links to those in the description below. I hope you enjoyed that today. Um, if it was helpful, useful in any way, please like, share, subscribe. You know the drill. Thank you so much for stopping by. Hope you have a great day. See you later. Bye.